there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be creating our own little DIY ink pads and this is a favourite technique of mine because it is so individual and it creates results that are unique and original. So with these, yes it is something that is kind of temporary, however if you pop these into an airtight container then they last a really long time because this is what I do with mine. And then once I kind of get sick of the pattern or it gets a little bit muddy, I, then I will uh, make a fresh one. But today I'm going to be using the Simon Hurley reinkers. Now this is going to work with lots of different reinkers. I haven't tried the pigment ink reinkers, um, but I definitely know all of the water reactive ones are going to work really, really well. I have two baby wipes here, so these are just kind of a lightly damp uh, little cloth, and I've got two of them. I'm just going to fold them in half and pop them down on an acrylic block whilst I'm using them, and then once I kind of end up finishing with them, I pop them into a little airtight container. I have, this is the Leaf Clusters stamp set here by Altenew, and I know that you've seen this one lots of times. I've got a couple of these, uh, the Leaf Canopy and the Leaf Clusters ones, and these are favourites, something that I chose to invest in, and I'm really glad I did. Now when it comes to picking out colours here, uh, the bottles, it's really tricky to see which colours they are. So I just grabbed a little tag stamp and this is my little swatches with a little love heart stamp and then I use my label maker to pop the name up the top and this way I can kind of hold on to one of the colours and swing it by all of the rest of them and see which ones I would like to pick up. I can kind of look at their true colours as they have been stamped out and then this just hangs on a little hook in my little craft space and we do want to avoid making mud However, in my experience, I found that it's pretty hard to even make mud, so uh, you think you're going to be just fine uh, with this technique in particular. So I am just taking a, the reinkers and popping down a little bit of ink. I am not squeezing hard because I don't want a whole lot of ink to come out. It kind of looks like you're putting quite a bit down, but of course these reinkers are so concentrated and it really is not much ink at all. And I don't think I have ever, ever run out of a reinker for one of my ink pads. And I really just use them as a completely separate tool in my craft space. Rather than just being the reinker that I'm only allowed to reink the ink pads with, I love uh, finding techniques and things that involve the reinkers. Um, so I use them up as a completely separate tool. So I am just uh, making a reasonably big patch here, I guess, because um, although it's not that big <laughs> in real life, it's probably uh, maybe about two by two inches or so. And I, because I have quite big leaf stamps that I want to pop on it. I squirt it with about three or four squirts of water, really light squirts. Again, that is completely optional. It's probably something that you just need to try out depending on which brand of reinkers you end up uh, choosing to use. And I just use this like a normal ink pad. I dab it down a couple of times and then I'm going to stamp this out on my project. And in particular for this one, I have, there's actually some blues in there, greens, oranges, and yellow. I think I used Psych, Guppy, um, clear skies and maybe tropical tango a little bit so uh, lots of different colors it doesn't really matter what you use and if you find you really don't like uh, one of the ink kind of pads that you have created yourself then no big deal and you don't have to keep it but things like this where I have all of these gorgeous colors coming together in one ink pad this would be really hard for me to replicate and take me a, a lot longer time if I were to use finger dobbers and like a stamping platform to get all of those different colors looking so smooth and cohesive. So I am just going around the outside there and making sure I fill in all of these little areas and this is gorgeous but wait until you see the next one. <laughs> so I'm going to pop that little uh, stamp pad, those uh, baby wipes, into a little container and then this one I am using Crown Me, which is the purple. I'm using Prom Queen, which is the kind of darker pink. I'm using Clear Skies, which is the blue. And I think I ended up using Tropical Tango, which is kind of a turquoisey, greeny kind of blue color. Um, but anything, you can just, as I said, have a play around. And it feels like it's quite hard to kind of get this wrong. So I did make a slightly smaller patch this time, although the uh, reinkers do wick out a little bit. I'm going to add just a couple of little squirts of water. And then I am using the Paisley Days Kaiser Craft Clear Stamp Set. Now it has these three butterflies here. I have used this stamp set quite a bit on my channel. However, I think it has been stopped. I can't seem to find it anymore. 
but obviously this is going to work with any stamps that you have it's nice if they have a little bit of solid area of bold area so that you can kind of get that real effect of um, the colors that you've chosen and with the butterfly here every single butterfly looks different and I love that they all have different colors in different places so I can't imagine another way that I would kind of create this recreate this uh, using traditional ink pads without doing a lot more work <laughs> so I have the butterflies here and I really really love the butterflies so I'm actually going to bring in that ink pad that I just used just before that we created for the leaves and I'm going to stamp this out with the butterflies and I just keep on going I give it a couple of taps down like I normally would on any normal ink pad and then stamp down now this butterfly actually has I think it's a three step process and I was a little bit shocked at the results <laughs> this is really I really 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 love the outcome of this card as always if you are inspired by uh, a technique that you see in my videos I would love to see the cards that you create so if you want to do that or you are keen to share then over on my Facebook group is the best place that you are able to do that and I would love to see all of your creations and your makes and the group is called come crafting with Natasha otherwise I will leave a link down in the description box below and you can just click on that and it will take you straight there make sure you answer the questions and that way you can get approved into the group and back to the card I'm adding in some this is a bluebell versafine clear ink pad so it's a pigment ink pad and the only reason I'm using this one is because it was exactly the color that I wanted I just felt like it went nicely with all of the colors that I used for the butterflies and this is a really easy one to line up so this is in real time that I am showing this part of it and it takes me a second just to kind of hover above bearing in mind that I have to also <laughs> keep my head out of the way because I have cameras and lights above me that I can't kind of get my head directly on top of my work uh, when I am filming so I kind of have to do my best and hope for the best but this is one of those really forgiving stamp sets and I don't love layering stamp sets I feel like they take me so much time and I need a whole lot of inks and things and I guess that's just not my forte I'm not really good at it um, I'd like to be I'd like to be better at it but we all have things that we can work on I guess um, so I am just using this uh, pigment ink here and it is stamping beautifully over top of the dye ink and there is one more layer to this stamp set and I was debating whether I even wanted to put it on but I am going to and I'm really glad I did because I am using the Versavine Onyx black ink which is a black pigment ink and stamping in the final layer and these butterflies are absolutely gorgeous I don't know what it is about them maybe it's the colors uh, that I originally stamped them with but I really really like this these kind of come to life and the three extra steps really add a, a whole lot every single time so anyhow I really liked this card and I decided that I would create uh, two finished cards from these uh, from this technique today that I could share with you and as I said I don't think that I can find this one still uh, available however you may have somewhere else you're able to find it or you might be able to find it second hand uh, passed on but other than that just use what you have in your stash I'm sure you have a brilliant set that has a little bit of solid area that you could use for this technique the DIY stamp pads and then I came in here with a couple more uh, of these dye inks I'm using clear skies and crown me and the dots on the wings of the butterfly that was kind of like the third step and then I'm also going to use the rubber on the end of my pencil and I just wanted to check it out and make sure it created some really nice dots I was happy with how those looked and I'm going to just partially ink up a little bit of the wing of that stamp set that I had originally stamped in black on the butterflies and I'll add this just in a couple of places around the inside and that will kind of fill in some of those little blankish spots uh, around my butterflies but just a few dots here and there and then a couple in the blue and it fills in all those empty gaps really nicely so no fancy tools <laughs> I just use the same stamp and then an eraser off the end of my pencil then I have this stamp set here this one is from waffle flower and I've used this one lots of times too again any sentiment is going to work really really well and I'm going to be a bit risky today and only stamp out two of these in the same Versafine Onyx Black ink 
and I'm going to use both of these for uh, each of the two cards that I'm creating. Usually I like to create a spear sentiment because knowing me, I will ruin one or muck it up or have an accident or something will happen to it. But I was being a bit of a daredevil today and just did the two of them. Then I heat embossed it and that is going to help me with the colouring. Uh, it gives me a little wall to kind of stay within and I decided to use some of that Clear Skies ink that I already had out on my table and just colour it in with a water pen. And then I decided that it kind of looked a little bit, kind of almost too plain, a little bit too plain for my liking or for what I thought sorted, uh, suited the card, sorry. And so I decided that I would kind of do a little bit of almost like an ombre, I guess, look. So I brought in the um, Midnight Snack colour, which is just a dark blue colour, and I'm just popping that up the top of some of the letters. And then that way, because it is, um, I'm watercolouring, and this is on watercolour paper, this is the Tim Holtz watercolour paper, which is the only one that I ever use for all of my techniques. I prefer not to have a too many kind of a range of papers and a range of things that I use, because honestly, that just gets overwhelming for me. So I, it's like vellum. I know I use the Lawn Fawn vellum. I know I use the Tim Holtz watercolour paper paper I just know the ones that I like and I like to stick with them and I don't like to have a whole lot of different types of everything um, because I have a really small craft space and so I have to be really choosy about what makes it in here um, but anyhow finishing off these cards you've seen me do this before but this is another cheat way of adding a matting layer without actually adding a matting layer now I use the scrapbook.com mint tape because this is the best low tech tape that I have been able to find I cannot say enough good things about it it is a relief to not have to worry about it ever ripping my paper <laughs> because nobody wants to rip a project once they are this far through it and I'm just using the VersaFine Onyx black ink to do this I did see some people say suggesting to use a black pen or a black felt or um, something like that. I find that I really like the uh, Onyx black ink because it's really, really dark and black. And so I don't want there to be any kind of shadow of whatever I'm going over top of. I don't want that to ever show through. And I really like the dark, dark black that this provides. So that's why I cho choose to use ink. But there are always lots of options and always lots of different ways to do things. And everyone kind of has their own different style. So do what works for you. I am a big fan of doing what works for you in your craft space because this should be a happy Happy, relaxing fun place to be for us and then I'm going to pop these down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and the actual panels themselves measure four by five and a quarter inches and then when I came to put the sentiments on here I'm going to put them on a little bit of vellum as well because the backgrounds are fairly bright and fairly uh, bold and it just helps them stand out that little tiny bit. So I did put some foam tape behind the sentiment and that stuck it down onto the um, vellum. And then behind the vellum, I'm just able to put a little bit of uh, double-sided tape. I was going to use liquid glue. You can see the glue there. Um, but I find that using liquid glue behind vellum, I just don't get quite as good results. So I pretty much try and stick to double-sided tape when I'm using uh, adhering down vellum and things. And it definitely keeps it nice and secure. So once I put a little bit of double-sided tape on these, I'm going to pop them down and that vellum stretches just on the inside of that black border that we created and helps that sentiment stand out nicely from those busy backgrounds. Then I didn't need to do anything else with the butterfly one, but I did decide that I would add a couple of little yellow Nouveau drops just here and there to fill up the little spaces between the leaves. But that is my card for today. I will leave links to any of the products down in the description box below this video. And I hope that you have really enjoyed checking out this video and watching the results of creating your own DIY ink pads. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye.